In our last lesson, we kind of finished up with this circuit right here. We had, it was supposed to be an alarm system. Remember, we had a classroom where we had a door open sensor, we had a motion detector, we had a glass break detector. And what we said was that if the system is armed and the door is open or motion is detected, or if glass is broken, we'll set off the alarm. All right? So, what we're going to do now is come up with the truth table to represent this circuit. And as the process goes along, you'll see we're going to generate, again, the, the expression. We're going to call this a Boolean, you know, Boolean algebraic expression that represents this circuit. So, we'll have three ways at the end of this lecture to represent this circuit. We'll have it as the circuit, we'll have it as the Boolean algebraic expression and the truth table. So let's get started. First of all, truth table, right? We're going to start out and I'm going to have how many inputs? I've got four inputs. Now, four inputs, that's going to take a lot of vertical space on this board. So A, D, M, G. Now, to get started with this truth table, first of all, we've done this before whenever we were talking about unsigned binary values. How many patterns of ones and zeros can I have with these four bits, these four binary signals? Well, two to the fourth, 16. Half of those are gonna start with a zero. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ones. Now, of the ones that start with zero, the next digit, half of those are going to be zero, half of them are going to be one. So we're going to have four zeros and four ones. The same is true for the bits that start with one, the, the patterns that start with one. So four zeros, four ones. Then the next column, the next digit, there's, for the top four lines, half of them are going to start with zero, half of them are going to have m equals zero, half of them are going to have m equals one. So we're going to have two zeros, two ones, and then two zeros, two ones, and then two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. And then the last column always ends up being alternating zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And that'll give us every possible pattern of ones and zeros we can have for those four bits. All 16 rows for us. All right, now looking at the expression going from the left, from the input side to the output side, what's the first gate that we're gonna pass through? Well, the very first gate we pass through is this OR gate. And so we are going to say that the output of this OR gate is the OR of D or M. So that becomes D or M, using that plus sign to represent the OR operation. Now we're going to take that and put this in this column, this first column over here. We're going to use this truth table kind of as a step through the circuit. So every time we step past a gate in here, we're going to create a column in this truth table. So D or M. Now remember, the rule for the OR gate was that if any of the inputs. In other words, if D or if M is equal to a one, the output is a one. The only time that we're going to output a zero from that OR gate is if both of them are zero. And, and so we can go through all of these rows and identify the locations where both of them are a zero. So D or M, D or M, these top two rows, both of them are zero. We have to go all the way down to the ninth and the tenth row before we see when D and M are both zero at the same time there, too. Going through the rest of these rows, every single row has at least one case, or at least one of the inputs, D or M, that are equal to one. So keep going down down to these rows, so M is a row one for both of those, D is a one for both of those rows, and both of them are ones for both of those rows, all right? So, if you were to watch as this circuit was going through its inputs, if you were to watch that point right there, you'd know 
based on this column, what value is at that point based on the inputs D or M, all right? And so, next column. Well, what's the next gate that we pass through here? The next gate we pass through here is this AND gate. And this AND gate is going to AND the combination of D or M. Remember our order of precedence. Whenever you're writing an expression, what is the order of precedence? Well, pres parentheses have the, be have the top order of pr pr precedence. Then comes the AND, then comes the OR. Since we are combining using an AND, this D or M, we have to make sure that D or M is identified as needing to be executed first or processed first before we AND it with the A. So this becomes A ANDed with, in parentheses, D or M. And we'll go ahead and write that over here in our truth table, A and D or M. All right. Now, what does that look like? Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at just this first column and this new column right here in order to create this next column. Now, the next column, what we've got is, well, the and says both this column and this column have to be one in order for the corresponding row to have a one in that column. So zero and zero is zero. Zero and zero is zero. In fact, for these top eight rows, it's impossible to have a one at both the inputs of this gate. Why? Because A is zero. So you're always going to have at least one zero coming in there. So these top eight rows are all going to be zero. All right. Now, the next row, the ninth row, we've got a one, we've got a one in A. What do we have in D? Excuse me, D or M? We have a zero. So that's also going to output a zero. The next row, the, the, uh, the, the tenth row, um, we've got a one in A and a zero in D or M. So that's a zero. Now, look at these last six rows. We have one and one, 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 one and one. All six of those rows are going to have ones. All right? And so now if you were to look at this point in the circuit, you would see this pattern based on the input corresponding to that, that row. All right? Now, the last gate we pass through. Remember, the last gate that we pass through is this OR gate. Order of precedence says that ANDs have precedence over OR, so we're not going to need to put this circuit in parentheses, or excuse me, this expression in parentheses. So we'll have A AND D OR M OR G. All right? So we're going to take this and OR it with this signal G. So we'll come over to our expression. We have A and D or M or G. And that's going to OR this column with this column. All right. Now remember, once again, the rule for the OR says that if there's a 1 at any of the inputs, we're going to output a 1. Well, looking at this column real quick, we can see that the last six rows are all 1s. So it really doesn't matter what G is. The last six rows for this column have to be ones, because this automatically we know at least one one is going into this gate. What about the top 10 rows? What about these previous rows? Well, in that case, since A ANDed with D or M is zero for all of those rows, then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the state of G. If G is a 0, we're going to output a 0. If G is a 1, we're going to output a 1. And so for the first, uh, first one, we have 0 or 0, that's 0. 1 or 0, that's 1. 0 or 0, that's 0. 1 or 0, that's 1. 0 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 1. 0 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 1. 0 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 1. And what you've got is, well, 
There's the truth table for our simple alarm system. The truth table makes sense. What it's saying is, is that as long as the, if the system is armed, if any one of our alarm inputs is a one, we're gonna set the alarm off. If the system is disarmed, then we're gonna completely ignore D or M and only set off the alarm if G is equal to a one. All right? All right. Now, there was one other thing that I wanted to cover in this particular lesson, and that is that idea of an inverter. We did not talk about an inverter at all in any of our uh, combinational logic yet. Remember, the inverter has the symbol, which looks like a triangle with an input, A, coming in from the, right hand, from the left hand side, and then at the opposite tip of that inverter, we have a circle. That circle is actually what represents the inverse. And then coming out of that, we've got the inverted signal. Now, what we do to represent an inverse is to put a bar over whatever's coming into the input. That bar acts like well, it kind of acts like parentheses. It says everything that's under this bar, we need to flip the output. We need to take whatever is coming into this inverter and flip the output. So for example, I might have something like, I don't know, how about A or B coming into an inverter? What does the output look like? Well, if I were to write this in, as a Boolean algebraic expression, it would be A or B with a bar over the top of both of them. Now, that bar acts, once again, like parentheses, and it says that everything that is underneath that bar has to be inverted. So, you, or, or, well, excuse me, everything that's underneath that bar has to be computed first before we can do the inverse. So, if I were to look at a truth table for something like this and find a little bit of space in my board here, so we have A, B, so this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. There's all the possible values. A or B would equal, well, this would be 0, 1, 1, 1. If there's a 1 at any of the inputs, then we um, have an output of 1. What does, however, that similar truth table look like? A or B with a bar over top of it. Well, A or B with a bar over top of it, every time A or B is a zero, A or B with a bar over the top of both of them is a one. Anytime A or B is a one, A or B with a bar over both of them is equal to zero. All right. So this is just kind of getting our feet wet in terms of creating combinational logic. When we start moving forward, we're going to see how we can start manipulating both these expressions and the circuits in order to create simpler, more efficient, less power hungry, faster, cheaper circuits.